There we go. Um, wonderful Spirit of Jesus, we ask for your help and your leadership as we come to pray this morning. Activate our spirits, energize our minds, make our bodies strong. We ask for you to fill us with new energy. We ask for your move that is bigger than us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Philippians 1, verse number 4. Remember that in verse number 3, Paul, the teacher of the word and sent to the Gentiles. He was talking about remembering people, um, the people of uh, Philippi. Um, here in verse 4, he said, that is Philippians 1 verse 4. Always in every prayer of mine. This shows that Paul um, practiced the act of prayer according to the, the times of the day, seasons, and um, cycles of God as we find in the Old Testament. I was surprised to discover that even though Jesus came and established a new covenant, there were still things that were important to help guide the daily lives of the Christians. Now, at this point, there have been somewhat a little bit of um, another group arising out of Judaism, not just the Sadducees and the Pharisees. Now we have the people of the way. They call Christians people that follows the way. The way of the man from Nazareth. The way of the rabbi. The way of the rabbi from Galilee. And so within Judaism, you, you had another branch. And this branch is concentrated on a man that lived among them who is God among us. When you read the stories of the, the early Christians, you will know that they, they prayed according to the patterns of the Jewish religion, which means they had six times, they had times of the day that they suspend everything and they went to pray to uh, to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Wow. 
That's what he meant always. In every prayer of mine, which shows he was always consistently someone that depended on God. He depended on the supernatural in fulfilling the natural. Always. It was always. Prayer was something that there were set times for it. There were set feast days also. Let me see how it is in the Greek here. Always in every petition, in every petition. See, prayer is called petition. Okay, look at what it says here. Always in every prayer. So I want you to understand the meaning of prayer in this sense. It means to petition. I like that. What does it mean for you to petition? Could, could anybody underline when you said, uh, let's use legal, a uh, court language here. What is the meaning to petition the court for something? Anybody with an answer? Anybody who deals with the law? She asked, she asked them something. To ask them for something, okay. To petition the court. So you see here, Prayer is a legal and factual experience. Prayer is not just um, just babbling. There are facts. You bring facts before God. For example, Lord, I sowed into your kingdom. I am entitled for a 100% reward. This is how you do business. That's why I'm doing business with you. So prayer is actually the means to do business with God. It is coming into the presence of the king to petition him on behalf of something, of somebody. You are coming to request for something to happen. The reason why you pray to God is because the power to accomplish things in the supernatural, in the mind realm and in the physical realm lies with him. They lie with him. Therefore, God is the highest authority that you can appeal to. Prayer is coming to appeal to God. That's why when it comes to certain things that I want to pray about, I want to write it out and read it out. Because prayer is a legal thing. The supernatural is very legalistic. And that is where you go to God based on the fact that you have been loved by Jesus. If you go there simply because uh, uh, of yourself, the enemy has enough things to come to come and talk about you. 
Therefore, you go there because of Jesus. You go there because of Jesus, who is your representative. That's what you do. Prayer is petition. Don't forget that. And you are petitioning for the sake of somebody else. And he said, look at how he put it, always in every petition of mine for you all making requests with joy, making requests with joy. There is requests, there is facts. You bring facts to the throne. Bring facts to the throne. You see, when you go when you go before a judge, you the document you present become a burden of evidence. You are bringing ev evidential facts. So Paul is coming to God to talk to God about these people all the time, about the people of Philippi, and telling God what he wants God to do for them. And let me share this. When people are far away from you, and you want to pray on their behalf to petition, on their behalf, there is Paul the... the the teacher actually took us to a new level of how to pray. And that is what we call spirit prayer. Spirit prayer is not technically mind prayer because we do not know everything we do not understand everything. We do not know. Um, we do not know what is going on. We are limited as human beings as to what we know, as to what we see, as to what we hear. So you appeal to the Holy Spirit who is right here on the earth and is everywhere and knows what is going on there. When you appeal to the Holy Spirit, who knows everything about anyone, then the Holy Spirit now possesses you to pray for those group, that nation, that particular person, according to the will of the Almighty God. So, spirit prayer is the kind of prayer that I'll be praying with people and it's what I've been doing most of the time, but now I'll go more in depth because we are, um, we are too used to just talking out of our mind. The mind is limited. Knowledge is limited. But spirit is unlimited. The supernatural 
is unlimited. So I want you to be aware of that. Because of your limited situation as a human being, that's why you need to pray spirit prayers. Whereby you appeal to the Holy Spirit with joy, with joy, with thankfulness. So we see another meaning of joy here is to be thankful. When you pray with thankfulness, gratitude, believing, the prayers are answered quicker. And also prayers of power has to do with you know exactly what you're doing. You know exactly what you want. So it's even better that you petition by the Spirit. The point is that you want to pray not just with knowledge, but you also want to pray with power and with the what I would call supernatural direction. You are being directed supernaturally. Amen. I need that. Yeah. If not, you will make so many mistakes based on your mind. There is nothing I fear on earth like not knowing everything that I'm doing or everything people want me to do for them, the inability to know their motives and what they are doing behind the scene that I cannot see. That's why you need the Holy Ghost. That is why in ancient times, the saints prayed like this, Oh God, who knoweth the spirit of this person let us know and you will see God will manifest. God will manifest things, will allow you to see things, will allow things to slip out of hand in that person's life for you to see, whether by word or by action, to really know who that person is. So if you decide to stay with that person, that's what you've chosen. We are told that 90% before a marriage happened, you might have seen the crack on the wall, but you were unwilling to listen. You were unwilling to read meanings into the cracks you saw on the wall. You thought you can handle it. So if we depend on the Spirit to pray always, also begin to set aside times and cycles and season to be with God, we will do very, very well. I ask that the Holy Spirit will take control over your life today, over the atmosphere where you dwell, your location, and the Spirit of God guide us as we pray this morning. We claim authority over our environment and locations. We claim jurisdiction over the financial realm. We claim authority over nature. We take authority over our business. We command that everything that is hidden from us that we shall know be exposed. People who should not be in our lives should be kicked out of our lives. We ask this morning that our spirits be activated and our minds be energized our bodies 
be sound. That all that we will do today will be to the glory of Jesus and of the Father and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for protection, angelic protection. Lord, we thank you that we are able by the move of the Holy Ghost to migrate into new opportunities and privileges, to migrate into money to solve problems and to live comfortably and to invest. We thank you that where we are, we become creative. We become creative, we create things. Thank you, Almighty Father, for hearing us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And amen. And amen. You can, you can, if you want to write uh, to our ministry, if you want to contribute to the work of God, Sending your prayer requests, you can write to us at P.O. Box 2491, Wichita, Kansas State, 67201 USA. You can email me at Idika Imeri 2000, Idika Imeri 2000 at gmail.com. You can email the administrator at Idika Imeri at Idika Imeri Ministry .com. If you want to call our prophetic line, dial this number 702-992-0792. If you want to call our office, the numbers are 316-243-2967 or 316-665-2967. Check us out. This is our website where you can also submit your prayer request and contribute to the work of God. It is www.idikaimeriministry.com. I will see you tomorrow. And remember that with God, all things that you want to do is possible. Remember that God can do the impossible for you. Remember, God can do the impossible for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. I'll see Amen. you guys tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.